Hey, welcome to Left Right Out. Um, skipped yesterday. I had some things going on, but like over the weekend and today, some more eventful things have happened. Let's first talk about. Uh, we'll go in the economics side of things. So, uh, Chairman <clears throat> Yellen and or Chairman Powell and Secretary Yellen testifying today. I can only watch like half of it because it was so. Dis- it, these people don't understand your congressional members who you voted for. Um, in this case, senators, <clears throat> um, they have no idea what they're talking about. I think I came in and I was listening to one complaining about diversity within both organizations. And if I was one of them, I'd be like, are you talking about diversity of opinion? But no, he's referring to skin color. That's like the most pressing issue right now with regard to one, the budget two monetary policy. So monetary, you have the heads of the monetary and fiscal policy of the United States, arguably the most important aspects of what, you know, of the country, of what, you know, can keep the country together, blow us apart. And this is his question. This is his line of questioning. Anyway, then you got Warren. She's called him a dangerous man. It's like, this guy's a pariah. This is all political theater. If you watch it, it reeks of political theater. Um, And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not the uh, president, but it would only be in consent of the shareholders of the Fed. I'll just tell you that. Senators play very little role. They're kind of guided in this because if you listen to them, they don't really understand what is going on. Then you had the typical R side of dude. He was like praising pal who is orchestrating one of the, he's going to be at the head of this whole thing as, you know, building the collapse. But let's look at something else. Cause you can go look that up. I'm sure. There's a lot of propaganda about it, but every time I listen to these people, you realize they're not the smartest people in the room. They are playing a political game and we are the ones at the end of the barrel of this rush from roulette. Um, <clears throat> bond market's been just moving, man. <clears throat> I'm talking about like seven, eight, basis points over since the weekend. We're now over one five, uh, one and a half <clears throat> percent on the 10 year, which I said, to always look at that. we got to look at that. That's starting to, I wouldn't say it's alarm bells, but it is shaking the market up a little bit and we're having a little sell off. We'll see how long that lasts, but it's eerie. It could be them pricing in uh, the taper, which I, you know, who knows if that'll actually happen. Cause I think when it, it does happen, you start having some of these auctions where uh, these primary dealers and the Fed are not involved as much, you're going to see these little rever- reverberations. And these are little signs of the cracks in the dam that are going to, and when, when this thing busts, it's going to bust and you're going to see a huge spike. And then that's when you got to, that's when you got to really worry. Um, what I worry about right now is the oil markets. Like why are we letting, we've got Brent over 80, we touched 75 or 76. I saw a print of 76 on uh, WTI, which that's pretty crazy. Um, everything is, if the government would get out of the way, our suppliers, granted, you, you imagine if monetary policy was different, but let's look at just pure supply and demand within this dynamic, excluding monetary policy. If you just looked at what our break even for our suppliers is, we're looking at most of the shell production stuff is at 50 bucks. If you're at $50 range, you're making, you're, you're, a lot of the major players are making profit. Now we're up in the mid seventies and these guys are still capital um, constraining. They're not able to go out and drill. There's probably, I mean, you got some deals going on in the Permian. That's a lot of private land. But now we look up North Dakota, which is like a mix of private and, and, um, and federal lands, um, BLM and uh, I, maybe a little forest service, mainly BLM. But now we, uh, yeah, and I'm not saying I don't. I hate seeing all the drill pads everywhere. Uh, I like kind of the way they were doing in Colorado, where you replanted the pads, and because I hate road, I hate you know I like that pristine area. But at the same time, we can be de- developing this. I know at one time they were really pushing for Alaska. We could do something there. These things are profitable now, and we can really save our butts if we start producing it. Because you can't just it, willy nilly just pop up. Of producing well. I mean, we've come to the efficiency where we can do, if we get all the permitting, X the permitting, because that's where the, you know, a lot of the delay happens. You can get a well drilled in 10 to 15 days, maybe even more now. I've been out of that game for a little while, but, you know, we're getting that, you know, diminishing turn, but you, this is hypothetically say 15 days and all the other, you know, post-production and whatnot and well stimulated. It, it, there's a lot after that. So we're, you know, it'd be nice to see some people start drilling, see some of these rig counts pop up. 
excuse me, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know, but it's a sign of, you know, Horrible monetary policy. It's also a sign of a lot of shortages. We can get a shortage of personal stories throughout. Like, there's a lot. I don't know if you go, if you shop at like a Walmart or you go some, you've noticed this throughout the last almost two years now, all the, or after COVID or even before we start to see a lot of people think that a lot of this economic stuff is happening because of COVID. Well, COVID is like a pin that's popping this bubble. It's exposing a lot of the weaknesses within there. And yes, there's a lot of shortages due to that and government overreach. But we started seeing some of these economic cracks the September before. And uh, so we've already laid the groundwork for this, but now we're starting to really see it. Now we see all these shortages. I see them. I go to the store. There's constantly wiped out uh, places within you know the groceries section, certain products you go out to eat. I don't I don't go out to eat much, but I've gone out to eat uh, throughout this th- time, various places in the country, various times within you know months apart. And what I notice is one, well, yeah, at first you know there's paper uh, menus to there's still places with paper menus to sh- severe shrinked um, menu options. And then the quality of food has gone down. I've gone to one place that I've, I'm not going to throw any names out, but I got one place recently. And, and before then, I hadn't been to a restaurant, God knows how long, but I went to like a cheaper restaurant. I want to say cheaper, it's like a chain restaurant. Go there, and um, the menu was cut down. I was like, well, aren't we through all this? Like, what's going on here? The menu is still this paper, one sided deal. And then you get the salad, and the salad just is horrific compared because i remember because i haven't i don't go out much but i do pre-covid or, or you know a couple years ago going to the same place it's like oh man you get the salad then you get this and this uh, um, this and the food is pretty good and it was just like everything's going down and the you know the service wasn't great either but even before then throughout this other places the same thing menu options are cut down um quality uh in some of these places is bad some of them have maintained you know they're quality but with you know severely constricted menu options then you go you got costco warning so i'm just saying shortages i'm saying that's a shortage in the restaurant industry supplies i've heard of things saying like we don't have chicken nuggets here and we don't have such and such and then i heard a a seafood place didn't have you know there's crab shortage there's shortages that are popping up everywhere and then once that one gets fixed there's two or three other ones going over here these are signs of a distraught completely um backwards economy i mean this is this is what we expected to see throughout these years this is what we're seeing now um we're seeing acceleration in home prices despite people being totally priced out of the market and those numbers going down you know uh, closings but the prices are still going up and they're going to try to you know blame as much everything as possible on just uh, minute little uh, actions but in reality this is a systemic issue um we have shortages in bus drivers. We have shortages. I mean, it's all over the place. This, this is pandemonious craziness. Um, and there's, it's almost like the, these people are inept at the wheel at this point. And I don't know what to tell you, but we need to be looking at what is going on. It seems to be getting worse. Um, I don't even think they'll get to where we're going to be completely tapered out, tapering or, um, even if they do, they'll come right back in because we're seeing just a little bit of a little bit of them saying, "Hey, we're going to back it off," and now we're seeing things happen. But the more they go in, the worse the um, the medicine we're going to have to take. So either way, we're going to feel pain if we if we actually take the medicine, or we're just going to have complete collapse. I'm of the theory now that we need to break this whole union up and let the crazies have their little spots and. Uh, and reform uh, United States because I, I don't see us ever coming back from this. I mean, you t- take from the civil perspective when we look at the you know, people's rights that are being completely construed and, and uh, upended, um, and just the, the threat of that. The people are actually talking about this. It, you know, I grew up remembering where the right and left are pretty polar opposite, besides on a few issues. Now, like they did a whole 180 over the last 20 years. Uh, on their positions like with fr- free speech and, and privacy issues. That's another thing. Okay, so on that, and then we'll get on to some, a little bit of something else, but when I was listening to the uh, secretary, uh, when I looked at the secretary yelling and get questioned by a senator from Wyoming, of all things, she was calling her out on the privacy issues and the fact that the IRS wants to have 
banks report transactions over $600, which I knew that that was a proposal for the last few weeks. And then she, and she's said that was just a very simple, the way she, Yellen brought that up and it would actually made it more alarming. If I was uh, Senator Loomis, I believe is their name there. I would have snatched her little heart out and, uh, and quite in bail it and in amazement because she said, well, we already do something similar whenever there's interest over $10 paid, which who gets $10 worth of interest now at 0%? I don't know. Uh, essentially 0% interest rates. But if you do, it goes, I was like, $10? You're telling me if I earn $10 of in interest, the IRS, it gets popped up. It has to be reported to them. Like, what kind of crap are we doing here? Like, how are these guys tracking our lives? Granted, they're inept. And somehow people are getting around loopholes. That's what they're concerned about. So they're going to track $600 transactions, which is completely insanity. A lot of like that Senator Loomis brought up a lot of privacy issues, but not And regardless of that, just the fact that it makes it, you know, this very subversive organization, which we already knew where it, uh, you can see that being used as leverage. I've had experience with the IRS at one time after I, had uh, years ago and the ineptitude they're trying to get somebody up. They claimed that I owed like some $10,000 worth of taxes, which in fact I didn't. It was actually a $10,000 transaction. Like I sold because I was going back in the military. So I sold out all my stocks that I had and I actually took losses. I took uh, significant losses, but I didn't want to worry about it. So I sold out and put it into cash and they claimed that I owed off my basis uh, in which in fact, um, they should have owed me money. It should have been a write-off of a you know a few grand there, and it's you know a very simple issue. But it took me two years, and every time I'd actually get a response from them, the number would change. So like these people are not your friend, and and uh, they are it's complete ineptitude up there. So the fact that you want to give them more power, they can't even imagine the they can't manage the power that they already have. So why do you want to give them more information? Um, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Prove to me one, I don't agree with them, so I wouldn't, but if I was running an organization to be efficient or whatnot, I'd first prove to me what your, your plan is. If I give you even more power, how the hell are you going to manage that? And, uh, and, and the fact that there'd be some employees that will have access to that information. We've already known like many years ago when the Patriot Act, there's people like the NSA, there was all kinds of like weird contests going on there. Like who can get the weirdest pictures off people's phones people looking up ex-girlfriends, uh, information, getting sensitive information about them. I mean, so there's, these are people that work in these organizations as much as we try to, um, you know, put checks and balances within their, in that organization, um, to when you have that kind of power, it, you know, it inevitably crumbles, especially when you get poor leadership, which we are rife with that at the moment, but we go back on the same economic issue. So I just pull, I, you know, I don't even want to read articles. I'll just read you the titles you go through. Like U.S. like I said, U.S. home prices surge at a record pace. Phoenix over thirty-two percent year over year. That's not a healthy market. That's insanity. Oh, okay. Now I know I'm bouncing around, but staying on the economic and the Fed. So two. Remember when we talked about the insider trading at the Federal Reserve? So well, granted, Chairman Powell is part of that, right? Um, well, Kaplan, uh, Fed Chair Kaplan, Fed Chair Rosenberg. I guess prior they both are out. They resigned one Rosenberg, I believe said health issues. The other one Kaplan, I don't know exactly why, but it's eerie that all of a sudden they're resigning. I guess they got their bag, they got their money and uh, they don't have to worry about anything. It's like an early retirement because <laughs> they're not going anywhere. They're not going to prison. There's no, nobody's going to hold them accountable. Wow. We're send them on a vacation. Now that's what I, that's what I look at it as. It's like, pff, they made a few hundred million, whatever. Um, <laughs> So that uh, that's precarious, but that is uh, that's one of the reasons I, I don't see us coming back. It's it's um, it's interesting, but uh, we look at states' rights issues that are being trampled. Hopefully, we do have you know um, the border issues finally calming down, or at least in the media. You know, they were just they just at this point, the media is just a clickbait machine. I think once we had. Which I think that's what Google and YouTube and all them there, you know, they YouTube originally came out all these voices and actual independent voices. It bred up all these investigative journalists and and yeah, a lot of them weren't right, you know. But that's up to society to build people that are able to discern and you know have critical thinking skills and logic and reason. Which we don't do that in school anymore. It's more propaganda. So no wonder why we have people believing all kinds of fantasies or whatnot. But the, 
the solution there is to make better people uh, and not constrict opinions. But anyway, so Google buys YouTube and then all of a sudden you start seeing the real crackdown. Mama Susan's up there cracking everybody down, cracking heads. Then you see little shavings of different opinions until we're getting back into the media, meteoric or like as in regards to the you know mainstream media opinions that are acceptable and uh it's easier to, for people in power to control people's uh, uh opinions if they only have you know a, if they can confine people into one of two or three opinions and that's what the media has been and then now we're seeing youtube become that and then the mainstream media which is on its deathbed transitioning into even youtube and being pushed by youtube so there's like a co-mingling there we already know that there's a co-mingling between major organizations, media organizations, and the government. But now you got YouTube and other places like that that are uh, in there together. Um, but now you see the CNBCs, the NBCs, the Alphabet networks that are clickbaiting, and they're actually um, um, segmenting areas of the population where they're instead of being journalists or whatever, they're just tailoring their titles or their stories to them. And in fact, lying in a lot of instances and not even really taking the time to properly correct stories that they push out there. And we, most people seen that with Trump, where they agreed to disagree with him, just the pushing of a narrative on him about him. And even now there's like a story today. Of, I mean, that's on a headline about some book that's coming out that Trump lost a lawsuit against or, you know, I mean, this is nonsensical. Like the guy, yeah, if he runs in 2024, let's worry about him then. But why are we still worrying about him? <coughs> Nobody, they don't seem to care about the fact that Biden and within this budget, like whether he's even cognizant of knowing what's in there, but all the little tiny things that are trying to get through. Um, and uh, they, I don't see anything. It's like they're covering for this guy. He's, uh, I, in fact, I'm speechless right now. It's, it's astounding. But anyway, I want to end it here because this is craziness. Like I said, watch the markets. Watch that. You should be hedged. If you have a portfolio, you shouldn't be 100% long stocks, all right? You shouldn't be 100% long bonds. You shouldn't be, or even in my in my regard, you shouldn't be even that 60-40 bond stock thing. Uh, no. You should be hedged against that. You should be selling some options against certain things. You should be prepared for if you get a downturn, one, you get a huge reverberation in, in bonds and a sell-off in stocks. I mean, you got to be prepared for anything. There's no safe asset out there besides an asset that's cash flowing for you. So if you're speculating, if you're just borrowing, if you're, you know, I'm, you know, not rich by any means, but I do know the markets my, myself and it's just, uh, it's a contrived, um, uh, market in, in a sense, but at the same time, when they want to turn the dime, when they want to flip that switch and it flips, you're going to see some weird stuff going on. So you need to be prepared, and you're, they're not going to tell you. Rest, you can bet your you know bottom that there are people that know what's going on and they understand that they control things, and uh, what they do ripples across um, across assets. And uh, yeah. oh, there is some other things that are interesting. So I'm not going to get to because I'm going to end it. But see though. Or, uh, the energy crisis that's going on in Europe, that's getting pretty uh, pretty interesting. You see the uh, Project Veritas, go look at that, the Johnson & Johnson officials that come out, and uh, it's pretty. that's pretty interesting. Um, there's, there's so much, man, so much. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Peace.